Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin and this is video number six in my series, Mushroom Foraging for Beginners. Today we're talking about the Western Amethyst Lucaria. All right, before we get into this, quick updates. Storm conditions up here on the North Coast have made it rather hard to get out foraging. So I'm headed to Southern California again to teach rocky intertidal foraging for fish and all forms of shellfish. Additionally, I'll be guiding free dive spearfishing. So if you haven't got out in the water with me and you want to join, check out those dates on my website. Hopefully you'll catch your first fish. I'm also going to start guiding hook and line fishing from shore. Stone tool making. This is something that is truly my expertise. My PhD is in archaeology and a specific emphasis in traditional technologies. And I want to teach you stone tools, friction fire, snares, traps, plants, etc. So if you want to get out, check out my open classes at catchandcookcalifornia.com. Just beautiful. You can see right here, this is what we're after. Distinct attributes of this are this sort of uplifted brown scales on the stem here, widely spaced, vibrant purple gills. These are true gills like pages in a book. And when they're young, they often have this incredible purple fuzz at the base of the stem. Entire mushroom amethyst purple when fresh and moist. And you can see this is nice and fresh, very, very purple. Cap and stalk soon fading to brown, tan, or paler. Most of these are very fresh though. Cap is usually less than two inches broad. Gills are fairly thick, well spaced, and fading like the cap, but more slowly. The stalk is slender, less than half inch thick, and importantly, it does not have a bulb at the base. You, there's no swelling. The stalk is often long, tough, and fibrous. You can see how fibrous this is when we break it. And then the spores are white to lilac tinge. On the ground, in woods, especially under conifers, and in this case, we're under a Monterey pine, a conifer. It is absolutely not Quartinarius, which is a toxic lookalike of the bluet. The bluets and Quartinarius are often much larger. Okay, so I'm gonna take the stems off because I feel like the cap is the best part of this mushroom. With most other mushrooms, I keep the whole thing. These I'm just gonna bury down here just because I like to keep it nice and tidy out here and also it won't draw attention to your favorite spots. Pretty cool. Not all mushrooms are gonna be easy for beginners to ID. I like this one, but in the beginning, it may be better to avoid gilled mushrooms until you get a bit more experience. I found myself a beautiful little cypress grove right here. And I just set up, I'm gonna cook a little ramen. Neoguri. It's gonna be a super simple little catch and cook here. Remember, we always pack out what we pack in. We care about these places. These places are beautiful, that's why we came here. We wanna leave them as beautiful, if not more beautiful than the way we found them. So the way I do it is, as soon as I get mushrooms, I bring them home, clean them, and I cook them, and then I'll either freeze them, or in this case, just put them in the fridge, and then that way today I can break them out and uh, throw them into something I wanna eat. I only kept the caps. I didn't keep the stems because they tend to be a bit woody with this species, but uh, some beautiful dark caps crazy how much they transform this like dark color from that beautiful vibrant purple i wish they kept that purple but you know <laughs> can't control it it's gonna cook the way it's gonna cook if you can get out to these wild places do some outdoor cooking maybe make some shelter do some practice learn your plants etc it all helps you to have a better familiarity with the wild and to feel more comfortable in the woods throwing in those mushrooms And in goes all the goodies. Got some dried chilies in here, it looks like. Some seasoning, some dried seaweed. There's a seasoning oil here. I don't know what's in that, but uh, my guess is it's gonna be delicious. It's going into 
That's one of those things I see a lot of people leave is they'll pick up the pack, but they leave this little bit right here. Anything like that that you leave behind is something that indicates to the next people who come through that somebody's already been here. And it like kind of subtly pollutes the area in a way that at least kills the vibe. You know, when you come out to these places, you want to be fully immersed. So even these little scraps, make sure you pick them up and pack them out. So while this is cooking, like I've mentioned before, I carry everything that I need in my pack anytime I go out in the outdoors, whether I'm guiding, whether I'm teaching a mushroom identification course or I'm going hunting, I carry everything that I need with me just in case I need to spend the night in the bush. If you've been following this channel for a while, you've seen me do survival challenges where I've used five items, for instance, and made a canoe out of a tarp. Um, I've done other ones, the wasteland survival challenge with my brother. Our entire kits had to be based on only what we found, made, and modified in the wasteland, basically upcycling trash. And I did that $10 survival challenge from $10 from the dollar store. But the truth of the matter is, quality gear goes a long way. And so carrying some good quality gear with you will make your life so much easier if you do end up getting lost. All right, we're good. I'm gonna talk more about this in a coming video, but fire maple, I'm digging this pot. Yes. Well, how's that? Look at that beautiful mushroom right there. Oh yeah, before I take this bite, I just noticed that there's a hummingbird on the branch above me. It's built its hummingbird nest, which is about this big, on top of a cypress cone, which is this big. How awesome is that? <laughs> That's why I love the outdoors. You just never know what you'll see. Let's give it a try. Western Amethyst Lucaria. Yeah, not bad. Mm, spicy ramen too, that's good. Not bad at all. Basically as described in, in uh, David Aurora's book, it's got really no flavor of its own. Very, very subtle mushroom flavor, but it's got a nice chewy texture. A lot of people might think, well, why would I want a mushroom that doesn't have any flavor? Honestly, some of my favorite mushrooms that are basically grown to throw into soups like this, including enoki, have no flavor. They're just there for texture and they just soak up the flavor from whatever you throw it in. So to me, this is actually a pretty good, very ubiquitous mushroom. You find it everywhere. And uh, yeah, not bad. I mean, no reason to pass it up. It's no chanterelle, it's no porcini, but not a bad mushroom. Darker in color, man, I wish it retained that purple. What a pretty mushroom, but yeah, it's good. It's not bad at all. It's actually pretty good. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, please give us a like. Please leave a comment. I love hearing back from you. Click that bell-shaped notification icon so that you'll know when my next video drops. And until next time, keep the old ways alive.